tonight, Lana. Pastor Benny, I'm here with my dear friend, uh, Dr. Keith Kelly from his Vineyard Church. Always glad to be with you. Always. I mean, you know, you and I, I, I think that uh, if they gave us a dish towel to talk about, we could probably preach about it, a hermeneutic about it. We could do about anything. Well, Jesus <laughs> took a towel <laughs> he sure and, he, and he washed their feet. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Merry, Pastor Benny. Uh, Merry this, Christmas. Uh, sh uh, you know, we were trying to sing before we came on air. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. There you go. You Thank see, you. he feels that you, we're only one week away. Are, yeah. are you ready? That's the big question. I am so, so ready. As long as they keep the stores open downtown Greenville on Main Street <laughs> on Christmas Eve till about five o'clock. I'll be ready. Well, I will be ready as long as my wife can go and walk the streets of Greer and Spartanburg <laughs> and window shop for me yeah. to see what's out there. No, we want to thank you for tuning in. And, and we want to tell you now, uh, Keith and I love to, we, you know, we have a hat and we, we draw the name. Uh, there the hat. There, there's that. But our, we've uh, talked with our producer and our producer said, since it is Christmas, all right, uh, why don't we, and we said that, I said, yes, Olivia, yes, ma'am, whatever you say. And we said that really, it's a great idea. And uh, so what we've done, uh, Dr. Kelly and I, we, uh, if you remember a couple of weeks ago, we started with the first chapter of Luke. And uh, tonight we're going to get into that uh, second chapter. And which is, of course, is the birth of Jesus. So it's, <clears throat> I know it's familiar with you, but allow us just to share with you some insights that maybe you've had, may, may, maybe you haven't had. Also tonight, uh, Rebecca Little Burke is uh, going to be uh, singing for us. And Keith, you want to read our scripture, say anything before the scripture reading? I would, I would love to. Uh, Isaiah 9, oh my. 6. Yes. For unto us a child is born. We live in the day of gender reveals and birth announcements. Mm -hmm. But this is hundreds of years before Jesus was even born. Prophetically declared the prophet Isaiah, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Mercy. Therein lies the names of our one God Absolutely. as far as the Christmas story is concerned. And, and you know, when you go back and say Isaiah, you can go back in several other Old Testament passages, you can read about the prophetic uh, voices who were predicting Jesus was coming, yeah. getting ready. Isaiah so beautifully says it for us. And so uh, we're going to be talking about the birth of Jesus Christ tonight. And how fitting, you know, when you think just a week from Christmas and uh, with all the clutter, and I'm sure that maybe in your home you have clutter like I have in mine, that we can clear away the clutter and be reminded yeah. that Jesus Christ is the reason for this season. Oh yeah. Let's let's not forget that. Oh, did I tell you tell you that Rebecca Little Burke she's going to be singing tonight, and uh, we're we're going to be looking forward to her. And so since we are going to forego <clears throat> the drawing out of the hat, we know where we're going. Luke chapter two. Won't you at home to uh, get your Bibles and or get your iPad or iPhone? That's, I'm still trying to get used to saying that, Keith. But get your iPhone or your iPad and uh, pull up chapter 2 of the book of Luke, a little over 50 verses, and we're going to be talking tonight about that glorious event that has changed the world, that continues to change this world. Have you ever thought, Keith, that even if you're an atheist, you still, if you write a check, you still are affirming something happened 2,000 years oh, ago. Oh, yeah. When you write that date, that's all fi factored in after the birth of Christ. So, hey, right now, Rebecca Little Burke. Oh, holy night. Listen to this. Beautiful.
stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. When Christ was born on oh, night, divine oh, night, oh, night, divine. Truly, He taught. To love one another, his law is love, and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is a brother, and in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of hope, in grateful chorus raise we let all. The Word of God says in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 1 through verse 7, And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This census first took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So all went to be registered, every one to his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, 
his betrothed wife who was with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were completed for her to be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Mm. If correctly read, that is Luke chapter 2, 1 through 7. Mercy. Just the beginning of the Christmas story. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Word of God. It is. You know, when you're reading, uh, let me just say on the outset a, a, a post note. Quirinius mm. was an emissary of Caesar Augustus. Mm -hmm. He was in charge and charged on two times to register. I mean, the Roman Empire was humongous. And uh, they wanted to keep, they wanted to, to figure out like we do here today in the States, uh, what the population is. And so we know that Quirinius had a census, and, and we know that it, it took place, one of the first ones, between 6 and 9 A.D., hmm. okay? But for those of you who say, that, ha-ha, the dates aren't right. No, 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 no. Quirinius also had one before that. He took a census. Yeah, and it is recognized that he did this census somewhere between 3 and 6 B.C. Right. So, so that, that just qualifies once again the birth date of Jesus somewhere uh, 2,024, 2,026 years ago, okay? Uh, so, uh, so if you're a skeptic saying, aha, no, 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 no. Uh, go back and make sure your church history and your reading of history. When I read this, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to wrap my head around it, all right? We're being told that Caesar Augustus was, uh, was on the throne. That's important, so that dates everything that gives us a, a, a certain uh, time. Quirinius was, had been governing in Syria, but now remember, part of the Roman Empire, Caesar Augustus said, I want you to do this census for us. And Joseph went from Galilee out of Nazareth. They went to Bethlehem. Oh, my. And, hmm. and uh, uh, he had to go back to where he was born. That's why he was in Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. Bible tells us house and lineage of David. You were there in Bethlehem just not too long ago. Just a, uh, a mean, couple of months ago. It, it's yeah. just uh, uh, unbelievable to, uh, when you get there. And the Bible goes on to say that while they were there, the days were completed to be delivered. Now, let's understand something. Mary had to ride on the back of a donkey. Yeah. And she's eight months plus pregnant. Now, I don't know about you. I just remember when my wife was expecting, I had to go slow over railroad tracks because it would, you know, <laughs> juggle and jostle mm. Uh, do you understand? This is a God thing to yeah. put a, a, a pregnant woman who's almost nine months pregnant on the back of a donkey to ride all the way to Bethlehem. Now, we're talking about 40, 50, 60 days. Here she is. She leaves Nazareth. They're about eight months pregnant. Can't, I'm, just, I'm just trying to You're put right it down in, in, in simple way. I mean, to me, there. this is where, yes, that fact that Jesus is born, that's miraculous, conceived, absolutely. But I believe it's also miraculous. And if you're a lady out there, particularly if you're expecting tonight, imagine if you're eight months plus pregnant and your husband says, uh, honey, we're going to Asheville, but we're going to ride a donkey. Come on now. What, I mean, what what hospital are we going to go visit him? I mean, going to go you know, visit him I mean, in? All, all of that. Yeah. I mean, Keith, for me, that is, uh, there. here's a miracle right here at the very beginning, even before Jesus is born. I'm not taking away anything from the birth of no, Christ. No, of course but not. But I want people to see how miraculous, how incredible, again, the incredulity of all these scriptures that we read, particularly here in chapter 2. And... Uh, you know, I have preached on the innkeeper, uh, yeah. a man of yeah. few words. Matter of fact, I don't believe he says anything. And yet, uh, 
uh, I remember, what is it? A little boy came home telling mama, I'm going to be in the Christmas play, mama. I'm going to be in the Christmas play. Oh, son, wonderful. Who are you going to play? The innkeeper. <laughs> he doesn't say anything. <laughs> I mean, so we just know this. There wasn't any room. Uh, and you know what, Keith? Even today, there's still not room for him. No room. If he said anything, and he probably didn't, but if he said anything, he just said, no room. That's right. No room, no way. Uh -huh. When you were, when you were uh, so eloquently expounding that particular passage about Mary riding the donkey, mm -hmm. it made me think about another time when Christ Jesus this time himself and not his expectant mother, but this time riding through Jerusalem on a donkey. Yes. And that made me think about when he comes again. Amen. You and I both have been to the uh, Valley of Megiddo. Yes, we have. The Battle of Armageddon yes, yes, has yet to be fought. And Christ will be riding a white horse. Yes. He came as a suffering servant, yes. and that's to me what the Christmas story is all about. Yes. But he will return as a conquering king. Mm -mm. Mercy me, oh my. And you know, and I love when we come down because he says in verse 8, Now there were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And here again is another miracle. Yeah. Verse 9, And behold, look what it says, the angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone round them and they were greatly afraid. What is so miraculous about that? Listen, the lowest class of people you could find were shepherds. I mean, people didn't give them the time of day. And yet, who is it that the, that the angels came to? The lowest people in culture, in society. Blue collar. Yeah. Well, Blue he, collar. Way beyond. He, they came and said, listen, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill. And, and that is, look at that. Look at what it says in verse 10. Angel said to them, don't be afraid. We've heard that a lot, hadn't we, since we began yeah. reading chapter 1. Don't be afraid. There it is. For behold... I'll bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You'll find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. Please understand, swaddling clothes is, does not mean an outfit, okay? Swaddling <laughs> clothes <laughs> simply means loose-fitting cloths. Okay? Yeah. No clothes. Loose fitting cloths. They're in this old stinky uh, place where the animals are kept, okay? Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's the only thing that, that I know to say. Let's put it down to our level. It, it, it stinks in there, okay? Because all these, these other horses and donkeys and cows are in there. And uh, that's not only where they sleep, but that's their bathroom and it's dirty and it just. And, they lay him in a feeding trough. What's he going to wear? I mean, they've been on the, the back of a donkey for 60 plus days. Give me a break. What? So I believe that Joseph happened to find some types of uh, maybe cloth or loins or something in there that, that they had used maybe to clean off the hoofs of the horses or the cows. And, and he found them stuffed over in a corner. Now, this is interpolation and speculation, but I think it's fair to say. And where did they get those loose-fitting clothes? Maybe they took something off Mary. Maybe she had been wearing something that we'd call a shawl, and they began tearing it apart and, uh, True. and wrapping it around the baby. But it wasn't an outfit. It wasn't a clothing. They didn't go to Macy's. All they could do was simply cut it in part, and it was swaddling. That's a Greek term, loose-fitting mm. clothing. That's mm. what it means, okay? I'm not trying to pop anybody's bubble out there, but... I mean, so so that we can see that. And suddenly, I love it, Keith, there was with an angel a multitude, oh my, of, of the heavenly host praising God, right. saying, glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. I love it. I mean, I, Keith, I love And I, again, I'm not trying to take anything away from the miraculous happenings. But to me, just the fact that she rode a donkey for 60 days, that's a miracle. Yeah. The fact that they, they gave birth into a stinking old stable, that is miraculous. That they laid him in a feeding trough, yeah. that is miraculous. And, and he didn't get sick. I mean, he, he didn't get RSV. He didn't, I mean, he, he didn't turn jaundice. I mean, all of that to me is miraculous. And with every miracle, I think there's also a mystery. Yes, sir. And the, mis yes. and the <laughs> mystery comes forth from the fact that the greatest act that this world has ever known right. was when God's unconditional love was shown in that He gave His Son mm. to us, mm. not uh, at 33 years of age, did he arrive? Nope. But as a baby, mm. not in uh, the Hilton or the Marriott, <laughs> but in a manger. Right. He came unto his own, and his own knew him not. Right. They rejected him. But because of what you've read here tonight, mm. Pastor, mm. because he was rejected, we're able to receive him. That's right. And right. to believe him. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to another song yes. here momentarily. Yes. And I'm going to get you to introduce that if you would. But if I could just, if I could, as some of our friends say in, in some of the churches, if I, if I could just take a, a praise break. Do it. If Do I it. could just take a praise break. Do it now. And just say glory to God in the highest. Oh and on earth peace, goodwill toward me. And I know there's there's accurate and other various translations that yeah. say it in a different way. But call me Charlie Brown if you want to. <laughs> call me Charlie, call me anything you want to. Just just call me gone one day because Jesus is coming. Right. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Boy, we're going to be back in just a moment. We, we, we love sharing this with you, okay? We're in Luke chapter 2. Right now, Rebecca Little Burke. She's going to sing Christmas Dream. Come on, Rebecca.
Christmas trees Dreams of tinsel and toys and Santa's workshop Noises at night coming from the rooftop With all of the secrets that the season keeps It's a wonder in all that they fall to mind that I may be the one who's most excited about what's yet to come as I climb in bed I laugh cause it seems guess you're never too old for Christmas no you're never too old Christmas, you're never too old for Christmas. Dreams. Hey, thank you, Rebecca. Glory to God in the highest, mm -hmm. and on earth, peace, goodwill to men. And now look what verse uh, 15 says. So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, we've got to go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's come to pass, which the Lord has made to us. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph, now look, and the baby lying there in the manger, and when they'd seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But, now look at this, Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her mm -hmm. heart. And then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told. You know, sometimes, Keith, I, I think that we overlook the role of the shepherds. Yeah. They were the first to, first to hear. They were the first to see. They were the first to tell. And is there not a oh. passage that, that also says that, that Jesus appealed to the common men? Man. Yes, he did. Because they heard him gladly. Yeah. And I think <laughs> oh, that my. the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, not just in America, mm -hmm. but all over the world, has not just survived, but has thrived for 2,000 years because of the shepherds. Yes. And, and because of, of the, the men and the women who get up, they go to work, they live their lives, sometimes in what the world would call obscurity, mm -hmm. but we know better than that because God knows them. Mm -hmm. And God loves them and God cares about them. And God used them greatly here. The gospel according to the shepherds. Oh, my. That'll preach. Now, that'll preach, my brother. It's right there. It is right <laughs> here. Verse 21, it talks about, and when eight days right. were completed for the circumcision of the child. Right. His name, this is so important. Here it is. Was called Jesus Mm. The name given no, by no. the angel before he was conceived in the womb. How was he conceived mm. in the womb? In the womb of a virgin. Mm. In the womb of a virgin, he was conceived as the Holy Spirit of God mm. overshadowed the young virgin Mary. Now, we know that this same Jesus who was born in a virgin womb, mm -hmm. 33 years thereafter, think about this, was buried mm. in a virgin tomb. Yes, he was. Beautiful. A borrowed tomb. Beautiful. But he rose from the dead, mm -hmm. just like he had said that he would do. <clears throat> so well put. I have never thought of that. Uh, from a virgin's birth 
from a virgin's womb to a virgin tomb. It's, I mean, it is. A borrowed tomb. Didn't stay there long. No, no, three days. Because he didn't need to be. Three days. And, and <clears throat> what I love is, now when you read this, uh, Jesus is presented in the temple. Mm -hmm. Let's remember this, that uh, Mary, uh, as you see here, when the days of her purification, according to the law of Moses, was completed, yeah. that is, uh, that, uh, that, that her body had basically gotten back to normal. Yeah. And, uh, and so she was able to present herself clean, okay, that she had to be able to do that in the temple. Sometime I found, Keith, and, I, and again, people sometimes think this is when, uh, when they went to the temple that the, the, some people think that the three wise men came and brought the gifts. <laughs> I'm not trying to make light of it. No, you're not making light. I think you make a very good point because what there's there's so much that happened here in chapter two. Yes. And it didn't all happen in one day. No. <laughs> and that's important or even one night or even a few days. You got to, I'm glad you made that point. And, 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 and uh, go ahead. I cut you off. No, but, you didn't. But please remember, like he says, and there are a lot of folks that think, hey, this happened all within X amount of days. Well, all we know um, is that uh, at least we're now into the next week after his birth because he, uh, the circumcision always came eight days after the birth of the child, okay? And so uh, um, that's when that took place. Given the name of Jesus, we heard about that in Matthew. We heard about that in Luke. His name would be called. And so... Here they are, here they are presenting Jesus to the temple, all right? And understand this, uh, that as we read the scripture, look what it says in verse 24. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord. Now, wait mm. a minute, a pair of turtle doves mm. and pigeons. Uh, many times uh, we forget as we sing the 12 days of Christmas, there's some indicators uh, in that. Here they are in, in, uh, in Jerusalem there at the temple. Uh, Jesus has been dedicated. At, with, well, I'm going to use the word dedicated. And then remember Simeon. He, he, he didn't want to die until he saw the Lord. It's amazing, isn't it, like Keith, how, how God prompted people, though they hadn't necessarily seen or even heard, they, God had prompted people that this Savior that yeah. they were looking for had come. And here's Simeon. He, 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 didn't, he didn't want to die until he knew or had seen the Savior. God prompted people by prophesying yes. throughout the Old Testament that Christ would come. And, and I think that it is fitting that we say the same Bible yes. that prophesied mm -hmm. that he was going to come the first time, the first advent, as we say also prophesies that he is coming again. Right. And beloved, if you're not ready for the return of the Lord, regardless of what your uh, eschatology uh -huh. may lead you to believe, uh, you can bank on this. Jesus Christ is coming again. Amen. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus right. Christ is Lord. Right. Look, if you would please, Pastor, at yeah. verse... 25, where the Bible says that uh, Simeon uh, was just and devout, mm -hmm. waiting for. Yes. I love how the Bible <laughs> describes the coming of Christ, the yes. consolation of Israel. Uh. And it had uh, been revealed to him that Christ would be the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. was upon him. And then it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Mm. Say a word, mm. if you would, mm. please, about the Lord's Christ. <laughs> you know, what uh, Simeon, he wanted to see Jesus, all right? And so when, uh, when we began, when we get there, and particularly in verse uh, 26, Lord's Christ, 
simply is a phrase that refers to Yahweh's mm. anointed one. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, just another way of saying Yahweh's anointed one. Simeon, uh, uh, full of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God having touched him. Amazing. All throughout this, Keith, the Holy Spirit yeah. has been at work. has been at work. And he knew and he wanted to see the Lord's Christ again. And so he didn't want to die until he did. And so once again, Scripture has been fulfilled. And it, not only that, uh, but the Bible says in verse 30, 33 that Joseph and his mother marveled at these things which were spoken of the Lord Jesus. And then when Simeon blessed him and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rising of many in Israel and for a sign which will be spoken against. Yes, a sword will pierce through your own soul also that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Simply, once again, there will be many, again, prophecy, if you will, uh, that spear, uh, it, well, how does it read? A sword will pierce through your own soul also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, think about it, that, soul, that sword pierced into the soul of Jesus, but uh, you know, uh, not, uh, not one bone was broken on the cross. And uh, when that piercing took place, water and blood flowed from his side. Why? Because we're told, simply put, that when your heart is broken, many times, hmm. and that area that surrounds the heart can fill so with water, that when you touch it, water and blood flow forth because many times it is an indicator that someone's heart has been so burdened Mm -hmm. that it got broken. So we know that's what happened to the Lord. And then Anna bears witness. Yeah. Remember, Anna's there and she bears witness. And then, you know, when you begin picking it up right there, Keith, uh, if you want to pick it up at that point, all the way to the end of the chapter, we see periods of years go by, okay? Please understand that. Now here in chapter 2, remember, Dr. Luke is very specific here. And so what he does from about verse uh, 39 and onward, he takes us through the next several years, probably the next 10, 11, 12 years of Jesus. Yeah. And I know we got a song coming up, and, and uh, when, we, when we come back from that song, uh, we're going to try to wrap it up for you. But uh, remember, when you're reading Scripture hmm. and you think, uh, well, that could, couldn't happen in a day's time. Well, no, and, and if you read it very carefully, you see how the time really gets by. And, and I mean, it, it really, really does. And, uh, and I want you to see that as we try to come to a close here in just a moment uh, because uh, you find Jesus. I love that. Uh, didn't we grow up singing a song called In the Temple, In the Temple Stood a Happy Boy One Day? And that meaning Jesus was there and he profounded the scholars. Can, can you imagine? Can you imagine that conversation? Yeah, I want to I I talk about that particular event and the childhood of Jesus when we come back. Yes. But uh, it just it amazes me how that pre birth yes. of Christ. How many senior citizens <laughs> were involved in in the birth of the Lord Jesus no. Christ? Senior saints. Never thought of it. Uh, you're never too old to serve God. You're never too young. That's right. Because God is faithful to do His will. Right now, the first Noel, Rebecca Little Burke. Come on, Rebecca.
Don't you love it? The first Noel. The f and you know what Noel is, don't you? It's Latin for announcement. Mm. Mm -hmm. The first announcement. Love it. That's what it means love when, it. You read, when you hear Noel. And we're talking tonight uh, with uh, Keith, uh, Kelly, and myself, and we have such a good time. Uh, Keith, I get so excited because now when we've moved forward several years ahead, beginning there at verse 41, Feast of the Passover, and they're taking Jesus to the temple. And then they leave him. I, have you ever tried to have one of those conversations? What here were the scholars, okay? You know yeah. the, the, the the men who know. And can you imagine the conversation that went on between Jesus and these scholars? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it it had to have it had to have been mind boggling. I can't imagine. Heart blessing, but mind boggling. But before we get into that conversation, I want to talk just a minute about the location. Yes. Uh, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem according to the custom of the feast. Right. When they had finished the days, as they returned, the boy Jesus lingered behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother Mary did not know it. But supposing him to have been in the company, they went a day's journey and sought him among their relatives and acquaintances. Uh, is it not a scary thing when you've got a child with you? Mm. Now, this happened with us and our children. Yeah. That's never happened, <laughs> never happened with our grandchildren. <laughs> we keep our eyes on our grandchildren. Right, we do. <laughs> but, but sometimes we did lose our children. Uh, what a scary thing. So when they did not find him, they returned Jerusalem, to Jerusalem seeking him. Now, so it was that after three days, they found him in the temple, in the temple, the temple in Jerusalem. I, I had never been there mm -hmm. until recently, but for a year or so before I even went, over the years, you have told me right here in this studio mm -hmm. before mm -hmm. and, and after programs, conversations would take us to Israel. You'd say, Keith, if you ever get get to go 
to those steps right. that go up <laughs> into the temple, which is where Bible scholars are 100% sure. Yes. Some yes. things, they're yes. iffy on location. Right. Not, not this. Not on the origination of whether or not it happened. They know it happened, but it may have happened over here, may have happened over here, maybe 50 yards apart. Doesn't matter. It happened. But they're absolutely positively sure this is where Jesus taught. And it was rabbi's tradition to teach, oftentimes, standing on the temple Mercy, steps. Mercy, mercy. And pastor, I wanted to call you that day so badly oh, when, when my group leader, uh, Pastor Corey Horton from Brushy Creek Baptist Church here in town, said, Keith, if you would just bring a message out there on the teaching steps. Ooh. And when I stood there and started my, my, teaching my. and preaching from the teaching steps where the Lord Jesus Christ had stood Himself, I thought about what you told me, how that, and I don't think you mind me saying this, you took your handkerchief yes, sir. and just wept on those I steps. I did, I and did. And your Bible. I did, I John did. Glenn and I some did. of the famous astronauts it had the same effect yeah, on them. It did. But these steps, Jesus went up these steps into the temple and then Mary and Joseph found him in the temple. And can, and it, well, we were talking about the, the conversations can, that what, he had. Imagine it. Listen, you, you help me here. What, what do you think that, let's just suppose, and now... For some of you who, who do not have any imagination, leave us alone, <laughs> okay? Right. Just just leave us alone. Leave us alone. Haters are going to hate, but it doesn't matter. What, what do you think that Jesus would have said if one of them had said, little boy, what is your name? What would he have said? Well, I think he, was, he would have thought for a moment, and then he would have said, well... On my mama's side, hmm. my name is Jesus. Wow. But on my daddy's side, my name is Emmanuel. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what, wow. Can you, I love that. Uh, what, why, uh, what, I, I think that would have taken them back and they said, well, well, little boy, uh, how old are you? Well, <laughs> I think, I think, and here again, we're using our imagination, right. but I think Jesus would have said, how old am I? <laughs> well, on my mother's side, I'm 12 years old. <laughs> but on my father's side, I have always been. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Oh, my. We could go on with this all <laughs> night <could>. long, <laughs> but obviously we're not. <laughs> but what do you think he would have said if they had said, little boy, you, you sure are smart. Where are you from? I would have said, well, uh, on my mama's side, <laughs> I, I'm from Nazareth. But on my daddy's side, I'm from glory. <laughs> how about that? I, I, that's just how I would have had how to say How about it. that? We don't know that Jesus said that. But, I mean, he confound, the Bible says he confounded them. That would confound me. And then <clears throat> when, when the Bible says Mary said to him, son, <laughs> son. Yes. Why have you done this to us? Look, and to me, this is one of the most profound and yet prolific passages it of is. scriptures it in is. the Bible. It is. She said, your father, small case F, your father yes. and I have sought you anxiously. We've been looking all over the place for you. Yes. And he said to them, why did you seek me? Did you not it. know that I must be about my father's mm. business, large mm. case F. Oh. In other words, to me, I get, I get more empathy and, and feeling for Joseph yeah. here. And, and he is an overlooked character Absolutely. in the Christmas story. Absolutely. Jesus, in essence, was saying, what do you mean? you and my father. I am here doing what I'm doing because I must be about my, my real father, my right. heavenly father's business. 
but they did not understand this statement which he spoke to them. May I ask mm -hmm. you a really, really quick question? We're about out of time. Yeah. I know we are. This is not original, but it is one since the day I heard it many, many years ago. I just can't get it out of my mind that Jesus Christ is the only person ever born who was older than his mother and the same age as his father. That's right. I mean, and he was because the Bible is very clear that Jesus, well, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit were here at the beginning of time. Uh, when they said, let us make man in our image. Yeah. We're talking about the Lord Jesus. When you were referencing uh, on a program the other week about John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word Logos was who? Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah. He's been with us always. And yes, I so agree with you. Joseph had to felt so left out. What a supporter. Hey, right now we'll be back in a second. Rebecca, Little Burke, most wonderful time of the year. Rebecca, come on, sing for us. It's the most wonderful time of the year With the kids jingle belling and everyone telling you be of good cheer It's the most wonderful time of the year It's the happiest season With those holiday greetings and gay happy meetings when friends come to call. It's the hap happiest season of all. There'll be parties for hosting, marshmallows for toasting, and caroling out in the snow. There'll be scary ghost stories and tales of the glories of Christmases long, long ago. It's the most wonderful time of the year. There'll be much mistletoeing and hearts will be glowing when loved ones are They ride together with you. Our cheeks are nice and rosy and comfy, cozy are you. Come on, it's lovely weather for us. They ride together with you. Our cheeks are nice and rosy and comfy, cozy are we. We're snuggled up together like two birds of a feather would be. Let's take the road before us and sing a chorus or two. Come on, it's lovely weather for us, they ride together with you. It's lovely weather for us, they ride together with you. Well, praise the Lord, and I have enjoyed Rebecca I have singing too. tonight, haven't you? I mean, she, can, she has a voice of an angel. She makes it look so easy. My. But we know it is not that easy no, no. because if it were that easy, <laughs> you'd be out I'd there be a singer. <laughs> I'd be a singer. And obviously I wasn't there and I give you my and word. I'm not, either. I'm not either. But I just want to thank you tonight, thank you, Pastor man. Benny. Thank and I want to thank you, our viewing audience. And I want to thank uh, the station management, ownership, and everybody who works here for just allowing yeah. uh, the two of us to come in here a couple of times a month. And uh, do what we do. And we do what we do not for name or fame or some kind of uh, gimmick or game. We just do what we do yeah. 
for Jesus That's right. and just for Jesus. I pray that you and everybody down at your house and where you go to church from me and Pastor Benny will have a very, very, very Merry Christmas. God bless you and good night.